From here, we moved to Kutumbakum village, 30 kilometers from Chennai, to meet Az Ilungo, who left his lucrative job and had a vision to develop his own village. Though he was funded by the government, he used both backward and forward integration for development. Instead of hiring middlemen or contractors, he trained the villagers to make ketchup from tomato and burnt bricks to houses. The cost benefit was a reduction from 15 lakhs to 5 lakhs a house. He has set up self-help groups in villages that make oil, groundnuts, rice and helps villagers to market the same through SMS and other techniques. One outstanding feature of his village is the housing system of one Dalit and one non-Dalit family staying together. He urges the youth to come forward and learn his model. Today, he has close to 10 IIT Karagpur students interning with him. Moving further, we reached Hyderabad, known for its rich history and architecture. Here, we had our second panel discussion at IFB on funding. The panelists included Professor Nandini Vaidyanathan, who runs startups and is mentor to aspiring entrepreneurs. Alokesh Srinivas, a BCom graduate who started Games to Win, and Dawal Sangvi of Dasra. Funding being one of the issues for startups, all panelists urged to first look for available resources around, instead of approaching a venture capital called, in parody, a vulture or vapor capitalist. They professed about Sham Benegal, who started Mantan by collecting two rupees from farmers. Professor Nandini stressed on the role of venture capitalists to be more than a fund provider, but be a mentor and give contacts. They urged that ideas may not be unique, but the challenge to implement successfully is unique. Registering the ideas from ISB, we moved to Nandi, a public-private partnership providing midday meals to school children across Hyderabad, which was an initiative started by Lena Joseph. Rice is given to them by the government, in which on an average, out of 1,000 grams, 200 grams is not consumable. They have special processing and cleaning machines imported from abroad, which cooks rice and takes it to the school. It uses the vegetables on the same day and does not use milk of its short shelf life. It has opened in Rajasthan and plans to start in other parts of North India. After the long day at Hyderabad, we reached Orissa, the disaster capital of India, made our way to Gram Nikas, run by Joe Madiat, who traveled across villages in India on a bicycle and finally planned to settle in Orissa to develop the rural tribe. Being a Christian, he made a home for himself in the home of Naxalite. Some of the initiatives taken by him include disaster preparedness, like use of water tanks for two to three days, grain storage for a week, earthquake resistant houses, pipe water connected toilets, smokeless chulas, and biogas in the tribal villages. Majority of the donations came from Tata Dorabji Trust and the government. Our next destination was Tata Nagar at Jamshedpur, home to India's first iron and steel company. In the evening, we were presented with a cultural event showing regional dances organized by Jamshedpur school girls. Following this, we had a panel discussion on agro-enterprises. The panelists included Manuhar Shukla, mentor to social business, Kias from Germany running Zameen, an organization promoting organic farming and fair trade price in Andhra Pradesh, and Kushnendra K. of Samriti, who works with underprivileged rural farmers, teaching them marketing skills and helps them market their produce in Patna by providing barcode services. The discussion started with Professor Shukla talking about the apathy of agriculture where most of the funding by the government goes to IITs and IIM. Zameen, a private company run by a firm, talks about creating a value chain and training farmers across different areas of marketing, accounting and auditing. Issues rose of the indifference of the consumer about price and lack of interest of children or farmers to go for farming. However, the discussion ended on a stunned solution provided by a Yatri of introducing games like Farmville 
to market agriculture and raise consumer awareness. Next day, early in the morning, in the midst of cold and green, we reached Devaria, headquarters of Jagruti Seva Sansthan. Even amidst cold waves, the warmth of the villagers was felt as they welcomed us with flowers and dance. We had our bee plant competition here, but the athletes were divided among different verticals like education, primary, secondary, higher, vocational, health, tourism, information technology and agriculture. The top seven plants were later invited in Devaria and are given live projects. Moving further north, we reached Delhi, the capital city of the country, and made our way to Goonj to meet Anshu Gupta, an Ashoka Fellow holder. He was awarded Entrepreneur of the Year by TV18. The moment you open your Almira, first thing which you see is a t-shirt which you don't need. Am I, am I right? First thing which you see is that one t-shirt which you don't need, you're, you, you're sick and tired of it, you want to get rid of it, you don't know what to do with it. My name is Anshu Gupta and uh, I initiated uh, this organization called Goonj in 1998. We work on a very basic issue of clothing. You know, that, uh, it's something like out of three basic needs where you say food, cloth and shelter, we target the clothing part. We raise a lot of awareness and uh, talk to people about the concept, organize number of collection drives and awareness camps and all. And as a result, we get a lot of material on a, on a regular basis. Then the entire material comes to this store, and these ladies actually segregate it. Every single thing is sorted out in a different uh, manner. Anything which is not usable, if it is repairable, we'll repair it, then it will be utilized. But even there is a cloth which is which is like which we cannot use for anything, we convert into different products. So what she is doing is that she is basically making this for a school bag. This becomes the cover of the bag, and this becomes the pocket, and this is basically to hold the bag, the strips. This is absolutely perfect, ready to move school bag. Yeah. This will be used as a rope like this, you know, and once you utilize this particular material which is the last inch of wastage actually and you weave it in the slow and make a product like this. This is basically you know the waste sheets which we collect. This is like A4 sheets which is a massive wastage in corporates and uh, photocopy shops schools, everywhere you waste these sheets. What we say that why can't we use the other side of it? Every 25 sheets, if you waste, you waste a notebook. Anything and everything under the sun, which is an urban wastage, can be reutilized, reused. It might be computers, it might be furniture, it might be school material, utensils, footwear, but the primary issue has been the clothing issue. When you talk about clothing per se, either you talk about cloth bank, which a few cities have, or you literally wait for a disaster to happen, then you take out clothing. So our basic issue was that half the country in any case does not need a disaster, but they need clothing. For every single person who does not have enough to cover himself or herself, winters are much bigger, regular disasters. You can survive without food maybe for a day, but what about the basics? We 
we travel across the country and you see we raise an issue that you know every woman in this world needs a piece of cloth for five days have you ever thought about the women who do not have enough to cover themselves from where do they bring that piece of cloth every month we went to a couple of villages where you find so many holes in the hut these people actually dig a hole in the night and put their children to sleep there because they have nothing to cover them and then they cover them with the dry grass so in in that scenario how and from where the women will bring that piece of cloth there are cases when you have two to three women in the family they have different cycles and they share the same piece of cloth you have cases where a woman used a piece of blouse which had a hook and she died of tetanus you go to another tribe and you talk to women and the women will say that they don't use anything i mean it is really shocking that five days with so much of you know thing you have nothing to use and you just roam around and what a simple solution in the cities where you are holding so much why can't we why can't we look at one women's suit which is a very traditional and commonly used cloth in india and if you hold it in your cupboards you are holding about 20 sanitary napkins for people we do nothing except cutting that in pieces and providing it to people after properly washing and all that thing and it becomes a good sanitary napkin for them and the solution is an old cloth lying in your cupboard this is what i always repeat lying in your cupboard you you go back to your place you open your almira you will at least find 20 cloth which you haven't used for the last 3 years 2 years 1 year you don't need it but you're holding it 